just to do a very quick intro, uh, me and Durgesh are part of Salesforce. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of people in the room have heard of us, but if you haven't, we are a and um, you know, industry leading enterprise software stack, right? We have various, again, uh, leading solutions for everything from CRM related functions to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we ha do have a complete platform as well, right? Uh, where companies like Hashtim are actually delivering very innovative products for their customers. Sorry. And we're just going to, oh, it's okay. Most important slide. <laughs> This is like, the, you, you hear that thing that comes at the end of the mutual fund ad, this is like that. Uh, basically, we're just saying that I may end up in my enthusiasm talking about stuff which isn't out yet, that's coming out in the future in Salesforce. So in case if you're considering buying us, please, please base it on current features, don't, don't ignore me when I talk about future stuff is basically what it's saying, right? Uh, okay, so I think we'll, uh, we'll launch right in. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for spending time hearing us out. But also, uh, I know there are certain customers of ours in the room. So thank you to you as well. Uh, for those who don't know, we are basically a subscription-based product, right? Uh, most of the solutions we offer are on a subscription basis. Uh, so if the customers don't see value, if they don't kind of renew, we, we you know. It's not a sell and move out kind of a model. So, so customer success is very important to us. And so those in the room who are customers, thank you very much uh, for sticking with us. Uh, so when we uh, basically now that we're launching into it, uh, what we wanted to do was rather than straight away launch into what the product does and so on, uh, we thought we'll actually have one of our customers speak for us, so to speak. Uh, I'll, I'll just start that off. So when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> My first job out of college was working for a venture capital company, and I got paid extra to put in a client server network. That's what my calling was. I loved it. It was super fun, and I just have never looked back. Well, Jane is a super person, and we're happy to have her run our IT and, and broader functions, actually. First and foremost, she had to straighten out a little bit our systems to bring us into the 21st century. When Paul hired me, he really wanted me to help deliver technology to our organization. Everybody should be a digital native, and we should be sure that we have the technologies available uh, that everybody can understand and can use. That was the mandate. It was really get the technology organization that was working in the front office as opposed to always the back office. Unilever has made an audacious goal actually to decouple our growth from environmental impact and at the same time improve our overall social impact. If you can marry your values and beliefs with the one of the company that you work in, you're undoubtedly going to be more successful. We have an obligation as big corporations to help people in their lives, help people live better lives. Two and a half billion people every day use a Unilever product. We came to the company because of this mission. So it's great to work for an organization that sort of has this higher purpose. Our best way to connect with the citizens of this world is through our brands. So each of our brands has a purpose and the stronger that purpose, the better the brand does. When I started in this role, I called my friends at Salesforce and said, listen, you need to help me out. We need to really move from a project-based way of working to a platform-based approach to really enable digital for the organization. But think about connecting all these consumers. Now we can really be passionate. We said we were passionate about consumers. Now we can do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The relationship between Unilever and Salesforce is not the old traditional software vendor and customer. This is really a true partnership. And any of our brands to be successful long term needs to actually have a movement of change behind that. Salesforce is a wonderful platform to help us build these movements of change. Running fast in agility is in the DNA at Unilever. I think with Salesforce, it's just put it on steroids. Technology has allowed us to disperse power amongst many people. What I'm trying to do is put the power of the technology into the hands of the people that use it. And so I want to give my power away. I don't want to keep it to myself. It's too cool. You've got to give it away. 
Well, it's a tall order for Jane, and she's well on the way to make us all technologists. I think some of us are better at it than others. We've got technology now really supporting all aspects of our business. Uh, this is a relationship built on purpose, a relationship built on passion, positive energy, and for the greater good. And when you bring people together under that principle, the miracles happen. That will make you more profitable, more successful, and happier. Everybody wins. So that was a little intro to what we're doing with Unilever. Uh, I'll actually just... So when you were a child, what you Can you move it to the next slide? Thank you. Sure. So uh, Unilever happens to be a customer of ours and uh, in fact, they're using us in, in a lot of different domains. Uh, I'll not get into some of the classical more, I would say, uh, CRM-esque use cases. Uh, sorry, there's a slight echo. Yeah, uh, which is, you know, the entire distributor dealer management sites, the customer service sites. So they're, they're using us in those areas for sure. Uh, but today what we actually wanted to focus more on was, yeah, uh, that part in the bottom right there, right? Uh, so two problem statements where they leverage the Salesforce platform to step in and uh, kind of solve some of the issues. Uh, one was the employee engagement and employee, you know, management of various employee related processes. The second was actual brand engagement with the end customers, right? So you, you saw the, in the video, they spoke about how, uh, you know, each of their brand for Unilever, they try to have some kind of a broader message, right? So if you're, if you see Dove ads, it doesn't just say soap, right? It, it talks about a lot of other issues and then they have a lot of these, uh, I would say non-profit and CSR-esque uh, initiatives as, as well, which they drive through each of these businesses. So they, they try to give a bigger meaning to the brand. So that also means they need to have some kind of interfaces for the end customers where they can interact with the brand. So those were two areas where they needed help. Now, classically, I mean, it's not like these are not problems that have not existed previously or that they didn't have any portals or employee apps in the past. But effectively, uh, and you know, the previous panel discussion actually uh, was talking about some of these things. Uh, effectively, there is due to certain changes, um, I would say in consumer experiences, so what was being labeled B2C experiences, uh, that has led to a shift in the kind of expectations that are there on a typical IT department, right? So, so if Jane Moran basically now sits and runs her business, the IT, you know, the IT department, the way she was in the past, she won't really be able to match all the expectations that are suddenly coming in because of the shift in the consumer base. And I'll talk about that a little bit. There. So broadly, just to put a backdrop to why we're saying there is a shift. First and foremost, I mean, and this is, uh, you know, this is not just a Salesforce thing. This is a commonly coined terms these days. For those of you who've attended multiple conferences, have probably heard this term already, which is called the uh, fourth industrial revolution, right? Uh, the reason why the era we're in is being labeled the fourth industrial uh, revolution is quite simply, if you look at the past ones, steam, electricity, computing, these are innovations which didn't affect one specific industry, right? It wasn't like, oh, you know, I've got this fancy thing and it's going to change manufacturing only or retail only. These were technologies which basically changed each and every industry, uh, right, across the world. Similarly, if you look at the current environment, uh, things like AI, things like uh, mobility, mobility still, I would say, is slightly older, things like IoT technologies, uh, these are becoming so prevalent in, in every household and in every, uh, you know, aspect of our lives that every business is having to think along those lines, right? How do I kind of uh, match those expectations that are coming in because of this shift in the business, right? Or, uh, a lot of us are basically just opening up, a, uh, you know, their iPhones and asking Siri to set up a meeting or checking where my delivery is and, and those kind of, uh, so, uh, if I am able to do that, slowly the expectation is going to be that if my company has given me a mobile app, I should be able to ask Siri, okay, when's my next meeting as well, right? That's the kind of shift that's slowly coming into play. So, oops, too much, yeah. So effectively, just to put a little context into that, um, you know, what kind of gap is slowly appearing because of that change in expectations, uh, quite simply, and you know, I, I love that a uh, bunch of these terms, I think uh, it was Chetman in the previous uh, panel who actually used both uh, personalization and mobile first 
uh, while he was describing what kind of innovations are coming in, you know, between both B2B and B2C. So uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, we feel that as well. Uh, on top of that, we'll just add probably AI is the other piece, uh, which everyone is kind of slowly starting to expect, be it as a consumer or even as an employee, right? Uh, and 76 percent of, uh, of people are actually expecting that whenever I talk to you as a brand, as a company, you should know who I am. And when I say know who I am, of course, we're not just talking, you know, okay, Mr. Aditya, I know your number, so I know it's you calling, but really know what all interactions have, you know, we've been having with this person, what are his interests and so on and so forth, right? You really have some insights into you and what might be the reasons you're calling. Uh, unfortunately, to kind of get there, that level of personalization which these employees and consumers are expecting. So this was a study by IDC where they found that to actually meet those kind of demands in the coming years, a typical ITR will have to bring in something like a 158 percent increase in the number of business apps they have. Uh, and if you think of this in the context of any of those typical, you know, large enterprise or even medium enterprises, most of them already have like uh, maybe, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 apps already rolled out within their organizations. So, so now to, you know, if I talk to a CIO and say, sir, it's totally fine, all you need is 158 percent more apps and it's fine, uh, you know, someone's going to have a heart attack, right? That's, that's basically the problem statement that we're looking to solve. Uh, which brings me to something which uh, Jane Moran, uh, the CIO from the Unilever video, uh, she actually mentioned where she said, the only way I'm going to basically be able to deliver on what is expected is if I give the power of the creation of apps in businesses' hands, right? If I just hang on to the old school way of saying, okay, I am the IT owner, you bring me your requirements, I'll make an app for you, I'll never be able to match those expectations because they're just accelerating. I need to find a tool where I can say, here, Mr. Business Owner, let's sit on a table and together co-create this app that you want, right? Uh, be it for an employee or for a consumer. So while we're saying this, let's also keep in mind the other underlying complications, right? Uh, a lot of times it's very easy and I've, and I've personally seen it with some of my customers where I've been in a meeting with a CIO and a LOB head and business uh, teams will just say things like, okay, you know, why can't we make an app for this? But I think sometimes uh, people forget that when you say an app, right, it's not just a UX or it's not just a process that you have to create. There's a lot of considerations, everything from security to uh, identity management, how will you uh, report on this data, how will you monitor it? Uh, and of course, as mentioned, slowly everyone saying, okay, can you just add a little piece of AI to it? Can it improve with time and improve the experience, right? So it's not just let, let's make an app. There's actually a lot of other stuff that needs to go in. So which is where the conversation with Unilever went and uh, what the reason they said uh, and Jane said that, you know, I decided to partner with Salesforce is basically this because what we've been working on for years with our customers is trying to say that can we flip the equation. So if you look at a typical IT project or an IP, IT uh, app project, let me say, uh, within most of these organizations we work with, the IT team ends up spending way too much time just on the base infrastructure, on the operational stuff, all those identity management reporting, so on and so forth we spoke about, just building the uh, mobile SDKs, this, that, and not really enough on the app design and app process and so on, right? Uh, so the that's how it's been going on for years. Whereas with Salesforce, what we've been doing for years with customers like Unilever is kind of flipping that equation and saying, look, infra, let us take care of that, right? It's just out of the box, you get a license, everything is just up and running, uh, high availability, scale, security, everything's already che uh, checked off your list, right? Uh, operational stuff, all those identity management, sure, just click base, set it up, get it done. So spend a lot more time on actually working on the app, right? Uh, that's the thing that you really wanted in the first place, right? You wanted an app which solves a problem. You didn't set out to say, okay, let me spend a lot of time a uh, lot of time fixing uh, up some infrastructure and you know managing the operational stuff. So, oh, there we go. right. So the way we've kind of tried to address it is said that okay, can we be that bridge between kind of the IT more IT esque requirements versus the more business esque? I uh, I say it that way because more and more there's an overlap that we're seeing, which we're very happy about honestly. Uh, where more and more 
business owners are knowing uh, are understanding uh, you know it and more and more it owners are really delving into the business side which is which is great which is how it should be but uh, even if it isn't uh, we want we want to be uh, that platform which can help bridge these gaps right uh, and by this we mean so if you think of it from a typical let's say i'm a business owner uh, within unilever and i want let's say i work in the Ben and Jerry's unit, and I need to get some kind of a customer-facing app or maybe employee-facing app up and running, right? Uh, what I will need is tools like this. I'll need something which is a visual process designer. See, I'll have the flowchart in mind. I just need a screen where I, where you just let me design it with clicks rather than having to get into code, and it'll be up and running. I would want to have some kind of an app builder where I can just drag and drop components, shift those around, and it just works. I don't have to bother about okay, how will we launch it? How will it work? You know, look on mobile. None of that. And of course, if uh, you know, if possible, can I just get something ready-made? So, for if, for example, we have a entire app exchange which is like an app store. We know a lot of business users who will just go click on, let's say, project management app, download, and it just works in the environment, right? So that's how business wants to work. Whereas there are, of course, going to be gaps in that where they will need someone to come in and bring in some code as well, right? I mean, this is not to say that, okay, let's do everything click-based. Uh, every organization will have certain custom requirements. You will eventually need to do some level of coding in any kind of solution. So can we also make it very easy for these developers to work on this platform, right? Can we give them a lot of easy to use developer tools? Um, We'll talk about the Heroku piece. I'll actually invite uh, Durgesh in some time to talk about that in more detail, right? Uh, so no code, pro code, but at the same time having this common set of enterprise services that both can leverage uh, for things like integration and security, because those are kind of us which need to span across uh, any kind of requirement, right? So bringing, building uh, this kind of bridge, and by the way, that's that's again one IDC stat. Uh, wherever IT and businesses work together to deliver apps rather than one in isolation, uh, the effectiveness and uh, you know basically how quickly they get rolled out and the kind of efficiency they find in these apps generally tends to go up two x, right? Which is exactly what it, where you want to be. So. I always forget there's this animation. I was supposed to do this when I said bridge the gap, but that's I think I think we can all ignore that bit. Uh, there you go. Right. So just to kind of give you a very quick intro to what is that uh, underlying platform I'm talking about. Uh, so we actually have a what's what would be called a high productivity uh, pass as well as uh, more I would say something which is more of a pass plus plus so i'll just kind of take you through this but uh, before i start uh, one context i wanted to give is uh, a lot of people have heard of salesforce's products which is the sales cloud which is basically the leading sales management tool uh, the service cloud which is the industry leading service management tool marketing cloud community cloud uh, so we've got these all host of uh, offerings that we have uh, what a lot of people don't realize is these are all built on the same platform right and in fact, the platform itself is one of those things which a lot of our customers are just using standalone and building apps like the ones you saw with the Unilever example. Uh, and what we have in the platform is first and foremost, uh, you know, the first thing we took care of when we started as a company was what we call trust. That means the security aspects, the high availability aspects, the performance aspects. Keep in mind, we came out uh, at a time when there were no cloud solutions, enterprise solutions, right? It was all on-prem. So we kind of had to make sure this is there. At that time, right now people are a lot more open to putting their data on cloud, but that, that wasn't the case back then. So this is the first thing we've taken care of and till date we have made sure that's never a challenge for any of our customers, which is why a lot of banks and BFSI companies even today work on the Salesforce platform without any concerns. Uh, on top of that, we built a very scalable platform. Uh, scalable to the extent that any, uh, you know, we give you three updates a year with all the, we have been named the innovator of the year multiple times and innovator of the decade and so on. So those are really powerful updates that you get uh, and they don't break any of your customizations or integrations. Uh, speaking of integrations, we know that any data in this system will also need to talk to other systems. So we've made all the APIs open. And of course, the thing, the reason we started this conversation, on top of all this, you can do very fast app development. So your use case that you want to roll out, you can basically, there are a lot of tools which can help you roll them out with just clicks without even worrying about code. That being said, we know there will be use cases where you will need to bring your own code and set up a particular application. So we've got a, 
platform for that a uh, platform for that as well where you can basically bring your own code uh, host the data, use our managed data services to store your data and it can sync data with that uh, high performance, uh, high productivity pass that we spoke about. Uh, you can put it on a Postgres or a Redis uh, kind of data store and basically code in the language of your choice, right? Uh, so if you prefer Node, if you prefer Python, you can just go ahead and code on top of that. I'll have, I'll let Durgesh talk about that in more detail, but this is the Heroku product which I mentioned earlier, which is our pass. So these are basically two different approaches that we've taken to delivering a platform for our customers. Uh, just focusing on the left side part, which is the Lightning platform. So the goal of Lightning platform was very simple, right? Uh, can we provide a solution which helps you build apps uh, in a faster way, in an easier way, and possibly maybe in a more fun way, right? Uh, so when I say faster, how are we doing it? Quite simply, it has both no code builders as well as pro code builders. So that means a business person, if you see on the on the screen there, a business person could potentially just drag and drop and create an app, right? Without writing a single snippet of code, right? At the same time, those components that someone is dragging and dropping into that screen, you could potentially have your tech guys use code to develop one of those components, right? Provide it to the business guys and they just copy paste it in the app as per their need. So faster because both get what they want and are able to work on one single platform, right? Uh, it's easier because we have a lot of enterprise services already packaged in as you spoke about the reporting and the identity and so on packages. So one of those components I drag in from the left could be say a report chart. Right, I can drag and drop, create the kind of report I want on this data, just drag that report uh, pie chart or whatever into my screen uh, and just roll it out to my employees. And finally, uh, you know, I said more fun, uh, quite simply because everything you need to know to learn this platform is already on a learning uh, platform as we call it a trailhead. So trailhead.salesforce.com, you just go, you can just learn everything I'm talking about just off there, right? Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, nothing is hidden, you can just go ahead and become a uh, master at it and you'll see that uh, the kind of results we've seen is 57% faster app dev. Right? Again, it, it doesn't always sound as convincing when someone tells you that you know their company has done this but you would have seen uh, the CIO of Unilever attest to this as well where she's been able to do it on her own. So we are basically giving you builders at each layer of the application. So if you talk about what you need to build, so if you had, uh, you know, just think of any business use case that you might have right now, right? It could be anything from a travel approval use case to some kind of, you know, we've got a mobile payment company in India which does entire merchant onboarding on our platform, on this platform, right? So if they need to design the underlying data model, they can just do it with clicks. They can just say, okay, I'll have a merchant data sync to, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, some center data and so on and so forth, right? Plus, which user of mine is going to be owner of this. All that, they can just design the data with clicks. They don't need to get into database design. Uh, the logic, so if I need to say that, okay, if city is Bangalore, then assign this merchant to a particular person, that's just a flow chart they have to create and it just fires and works, right? No code required for that either. Uh, user experience, you saw that in the previous screen, you can just drag and drop and create the entire mobile screen the way you want to create it. And even things like intelligence, so we've not uh, started this with this particular company, but uh, to give you an example, for example, with uh, AB InBev, we ran a pilot where they just take a photo of a shelf and we have something called Einstein Vision, which is basically a image recognition based AI service. Uh, and it will basically tell them that, okay, in the shelves, how many of my products are there? Uh, AB InBev has Budweiser. So how many Budweiser are there? in each shelf, in what arrangement, and just loads that data. So if a guy goes, uh, one of the sales guys goes and takes a photo of the shelf, that's it. He doesn't need to manually enter all this. So to roll out an application like that, the AI as a service is available, as well as the UI process and data design. So, and of course, all these different services which we spoke about, right? Uh, again, just to emphasize that point, uh, for this mobile payment company we were talking about, uh, the biggest headache was, look, if we start to do custom development, I'll have to design it for the web, I'll have to design for the mobile, there's a whole bunch of things I have to do. With us, the mobile app is just ready-made. You just draw out your process, it just works on the mobile, right? So the time to market, time to execute, and uh, time to value, all are really, really squeezed tight, and they could get something up and running, a process up and running within, I think, uh, six weeks, which their internal IT guys had said, this will take us, like, I think, four months to get you up and running, right? 
So uh, with Unilever, just to kind of circle back before I hand off to Durgesh, with Unilever, just to give one example out of those 66 apps, they, uh, you know, and, and you are probably most of you are aware, it's, it's a massive organization, there's over 100,000 employees. So to launch six apps used to be, I mean, this would have taken a year and a half at least for them once upon a time, but they managed to, in fact, I put those apps there somewhere. So uh, these six apps, everything from uh, an internal ideas portal to an entire approval based, uh, you know, where they can get approvals for orders and so on. Uh, so a whole bunch of these uh, internal apps, they launched it within six months in all geographies, right? And six months only because it actually took them that long to launch it geography by geography, but the execution was fairly, fairly rapid. So this is the kind of power that someone like Jane Moran has gotten out of this platform where she's able to execute her vision along with the business team at a very, very rapid pace, right? Uh, but on that note, I just want to circle back to something we mentioned earlier, which is brand experiences. So while this is good for them where it's an internal facing use case, but they also wanted certain uh, customer facing portals and apps uh, like those Ben and Jerry's apps that we spoke about. Uh, and for that, they said, okay, we want to bring our own code, right? We don't want this drag and drop builder. We want something which is pixel perfect in a specific way. So I will bring our own code. So that they actually executed on our Heroku platform. And for that, I'll just invite Durgesh on stage. So what, what Adit has uh, shared more about, you know, how Unilever has used their, uh, the, the core lightning platform which is more like a high productivity pass platform to give experience to, uh, to give engaging applications for their employees. But now when we look back, uh, they also have a need of giving a rich branded app uh, and more engaging applications for their end consumers. They have around 400 plus products and they want to bring uh, digital innovations on those, on, on all those brands and, uh, and want to them, want to bring them much more faster. This product gives them, uh, Sales of Heroku gives them uh, a solution where you, they can transform their application development using and create uh, mobile and web applications uh, with the language of their own choice and provide a delighted experience with the high scale and uh, trusted solution. Using this platform, Unilever has gone, gone from just the number of 100 to the millions uh, easily without any, any of the down, down, downgrades as well as without any crashing of the app. And at the same time, this product gives them a surety of running their high compliance applications as well. Um, and developer loves Heroku. They can, why? Because they can build their applications much more faster on this platform. Heroku is build, being running on one of the world's leading IaaS solution, which is AWS. And, uh, and it takes care of the complete software development lifecycle of your solution, where, uh, where the programmer will only going to be focusing on developing the applications and focusing on the business logic. Uh, but on the other side, Heroku is going to take care of managing, scaling, orchestrating the whole solution. And not only that, it also gives a lot of tools around collaborating it, uh, around, around collaborations among the team, giving a, a whole DevOps process inbuilt inside the platform so that you can easily, you know, develop and deploy applications and scale. And this is how the whole, the, the platform gives you, you know, services around building, scaling, testing and deploying your application with much more ease. And if you just go one level deep into the hood, uh, it gives you whole flexibility and gives a lot of tools and features around your application development, around data services and as well as on the application management as well. And if we just, you know, take um, the part, uh, it take those features like Heroku Shield in private space, that gives you solutions to to make your applications high compliant without adding any of the complex uh, uh, complexities above your application as a part of code. It by default take care of, uh, of it and this is all just one click enabled. Uh, 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 and uh, this all is being proven and trusted by enterprise as well. Uh, well, at the one side, it brings a, a great developer experience. It also brings uh, some of the facts and figures which you can see here that um, many of the world largest and highest using scalable apps are running on this platform itself. We are day to day manage around a request of 23 billions per day. And not only this, being open to the open source frameworks, uh, around 8 plus million apps are already being deployed on this platform. And above it, we have a whole ecosystem of, 
of our partners who have built more than 150 plus add-ons on this, which can be used like a plug and play services onto your app so that you can choose the one which you want based on your need and maybe can switch in between other others as well. A very great story uh, I have seen uh, into my previous life is uh, and just want to correlate it with this that using this platform you can actually scale and create your highly, highly developed applications and, and if we just see a common scenario right many of the times uh, every business organization have a system of engagement as well as a marketing solution product maybe it is a marketing cloud itself right and also they have their, their other connected systems because of the need of the different business LOBs. And at the other side of the system, they have their, their customers who want a, a more personalized uh, and more engaging experience around their mobile, around their web apps and, and also not only that, also with the, with the latest innovative touch points which you have like bots and, and other things. At the same time, what they need is a digital platform like Heroku which can give a, a single view to their end customers and more of the personalized solution. Uh, so that uh, and and also the and to the developers so that they can easily deploy these new features in, and bring them to mar market in much more faster way. And not only this, this can also uh, provide you a solution where you can extend your other features or other solutions which you have already built on other clouds and, and provide the solutions in much more integrated as well as I would say personalized context to your, to your, to your customer as well. Uh, and and this is the way you know all of the companies are moving more towards from a, from a business centric companies to our app company itself. Because in today's world since the demand is moving so, so drastically and that is how uh, we have seen in our previous panel discussions as well that every com company needs to be an app company now. Um, and we have a, a huge portfolio, a great portfolio around across the different verticals and industries and around the globe as well who has used this platform to bring these all solutions to their customer in much more faster thing. Uh, if I just take an example of Macy's who has started, who are more of a brick and mortar in retailers having their stores all around the US and other places. Uh, they, they wanted a platform, they, they realized it very soon that they want to be, uh, in, they want to engage with their customers in a new way. They want a platform where, where they can bring uh, in the more digital solutions and can engage with their, with their, uh, with their customers in not just the store, but also provide them channels like e-commerce where they can, they can have a scalable solution so that during the festive seasons like, like Black Fridays and all, their, their, their consumers can simply go on this app, that app and can buy and, and subscribe the products there itself. And then another good, good example here is Lutron who, who has bring the whole IoT uh, landscape for their home automation using this platform. They have used this solution so that anyone from any place around the world can manage his, uh, the lightings in his home just by his mobile app itself. Everything is now digitalized. He can, he can select on which day, on which time, what should be the light uh, shade onto his house. Even if he's on vacation, he want to switch on the light so that uh, somebody is there, uh, looks like somebody is in the house, uh, he can do that there itself. Uh, another great example from around the world is Westfield who has, uh, who are well known in their shopping centers, uh, retail solutions, uh, maybe having 100 plus uh, short shopping retailers, malls are all around the world. Uh, they, they, they bring up this app as a solution for their end consumers again so that they can digitally, digitally connect with them and can, can also and they are also using this solution to engage the sales cycle with their, with their end retailers so that whenever you know they want to propose a new retail place for, for the other retail solutions they can just use their mobile apps and, and the, the computer generated graphics as well as the images will come in place. Well, there are many more uh, other customers who are there. Um, the, the other great story is Quinn, Coin, who are who uh, who has built the whole um, who had built the whole uh, Bitcoin tra uh, trading com solution itself on this platform, and this this says the scalability what this brings. And I will just gonna share one more part that is not just the whole thing about the platform. It it, it also has many, many more things like MuleSoft Tiny Point platform, which is recently is a part of this. Uh, part of this, this Salesforce ecosystem using which you can connect and integrate uh, with, with lot of different applications, data and services on, on fly with very ease. We have our own Einstein platform which can, which can make your application more of a AI enabled as well as 
you design your solutions around it. it. It brings a lot of things like vision and language using which you can have a pattern recognition, you can have uh, image image recognition solutions, you can ha you can work on the sentiments of the of these uh, discussions you are having with your customer to, to provide more of a better solutions around it. And recently we also allowed uh, uh, announced our solutions in the stream force around Einstein bots and voice. So that they can also engage with the new AI platforms which are which are more voice enabled like Alexa and series of the world as well as designing your own bots into the system and deploying into your apps so that you your user can have a self service based solutions available on this. And with this, for uh, the sake of time, I was just going to hand, uh, hand over, uh, but without, without moving, uh, but, but before taking much time and before moving, I will just suggest everyone to visit trailer.salesforce.com. This is the best place which we recommend to uh, each of our customer, developers, uh, and uh, each of our partners as well, where they can go and learn all about this platform uh, freely itself. Uh, this is a very uh, engaging and a fun way to learn all about Salesforce and you can get a first hand experience about, uh, for, about our platform and learn them very easily. And with this, I will just going to close with a thank you note and uh, we will be around in case if you have any questions, just let us know. Yeah.